Dr. Jewel Diamond Taylor, a leading voice of empowerment, faith, enrichment, speaker, wife, mother, grandmother to our very special Cody. She's an author, a life coach, a therapist, a founder of a nonprofit, Women on the Grow. She is an uplifter and an encouraging voice of hope, faith, and assurance. She travels internationally, inspiring audiences. And she comes here a couple times a year to inspire us. And she's here today to give us some of her wisdom, to teach us, to uplift us, to assist us in this journey, this thing that we call life. So without further ado, let us welcome our own Dr. Jewel Diamond Taylor. I can't sing like her, but oh, what a beautiful morning. I believe beautiful things are coming my way. Who believes that? Yeah. What a beautiful morning. We are still here. Yeah. Woo! We are still here. Just take a moment and breathe that in. We are still here. The gate is open. The door is open, ready for you to receive. The gate is open for those that have eyes to see and ears to hear. Not everybody's ready, but I could feel the energy in this room. You're ready. Yes. You're ready. You've been planting seeds. You've been praying, you've been serving, you've been loving, you've been forgiving, you've been willing, you've been open, you've been flexible, you've been teachable, you've been seeking. So I welcome you to the month of May. It may rain, it may snow. <laughs> It may be 74 degrees, it may be 35 degrees. Anything may happen. <laughs> oh, what a beautiful morning. Wow. You know, the more mature you get, you slow down and you, you recognize the blessings. You see them more clearly. You're not rushing through life. You're seeing things you didn't see before because you were so busy, you were so hurting, you were trying to control everything, <laughs> fix everything, and now you're just <sighs> trusting that divine feminine energy in you because all the feminine energy does is create yes. and birth and manifest and create, it is a channel for things to come through. There are many different ways that we can experience the labor of love. And I'm praying that the Holy Spirit works through me this morning because I've opened up myself as a channel and all the way on the 10, then the 605, <laughs> and then, yeah, uh, the 210, all of those different freeways. Spirit kept talking. I said, Spirit, really? I've already done my notes. And <laughs> downloads just kept coming. Yes. And uh, I thought about a scripture that says, the word of my mouth shall bear fruit. Mm -hmm. And there are so many people out there, not here, that are out there starving. Because mm -hmm. they haven't used the power mm -hmm. of their words. Yes. You know, they're out there saying they're broke. They're out there saying they're lonely. They're out there saying the economy's bad. They're out there saying nobody loves me, but not you. You understand the power of your words. Yes. You don't say you broke. You say your money's circulating. Yes. <laughs> you're not saying you're sick. You're saying that your body is cleansing and healing and restoring itself. 
you understand the power of your word. And I remember hearing a long time ago uh, about a young man that went to apply for a job. It was during the times when the military was using a lot of telegraph machines and sending out messages. And he was applying for a job to translate the Morse code. Do you remember that? Tick, 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 tick. And he walked into the lobby to be interviewed, and there were a lot of other men in the lobby waiting to be hired. They were much older than him. And here this young man walks in, and he's hearing all this noise around him. Everybody's talking, and you could hear machines going. And all of a sudden, the interviewer walks out and calls his name. And everybody around looked like, well, how did he get called into the room? We've been sitting here waiting. And the interviewer came out and he says, look, I'm sorry, but for the last few minutes, while you all were sitting here, the telegraph has been ticking out the following message through Morse code. If you understand this message, then come right in. The job is yours. <laughs> I wonder how many opportunities we lost because we didn't hear the voice of God. We're so busy in scrolling and cooking and working and caregiving and shopping and just doing all kind of stuff. And, and we're like, God, how did they get what? How did she what? How, how did they? How did they get ahead of me? Maybe they were listening to the Word of God listening to those, those, what I call Holy Ghost nudges. It's like, okay. And I've learned to stop resisting. I've learned that if I'm going to create and give birth to things, I've got to sometimes do what the word says. Be still and know that I am God. And when I'm still, I remember things like, we will eat the fruit of our mouths, which is in Proverbs. I'm like, what does that mean? That means that, Jewel, if you're lacking in anything, if you feel like you're missing something, if you're feeling delayed, denied, if you're feeling rejected, if you're feeling like everybody's ahead of you, what words have been coming out of your mouth? Come on, somebody. And Jewel, when things are working out in your, for your good, and Jewel, when things are lining up, and Jewel, when you're feeling grace of God, when you're feeling, when you see the smiles all around you, when you feel the friendliness of people, when you feel the grace of God, when you see people putting things in your hands, and when you see people calling you and loving you and helping you and serving you and connecting you with information, that is nothing but God. Because I eat by the fruit of my mouth. I'm not surprised when love shows up. I'm not surprised when people smile at me. I'm not surprised when we went to buy some balloons the other day and the line was so long and, and a young man who was about 80 years old said, oh, you can go right ahead of me. And he didn't know I was in a rush. I had to get to my event that I got the balloons for. It's like, well, thank you. I used to say, oh, that's okay, no, that's okay, oh, that's okay, no, that's okay. <laughs> I learned to say thank you. <laughs> the feminine energy learns how to what? Come on, receive. Yes, come on. Yes, yes, yes. Men, this is for you too. Mm -hmm. you, you, the world tells you to be so strong. The world tells you just take care of everybody else. The world tells you to be tough, and the world tells you as a weak man to receive help. My husband of 54 years has learned to receive. <laughs> oh, well, that's okay, that's okay. I got it. And we had to learn from each other that feminine energy says, thank you. Thank you. I'm worthy of receiving. That's right. Thank you. You see the goddess in me, and I see the king in you. I see your worth, and you see my worth. You see my inner beauty, and I see your inner beauty. So it's okay to give compliments. It's okay to receive a compliment. 
because that's that feminine energy. The feminine energy is not defensive. It's not angry. It's not, um, uh, I don't know, heavy handed. It is gentle. Mm -hmm. It is a place of solace. It is a place where birthing comes through. Yes. And so I want to share something from a book that I've written and it's just an email. I'm not, yeah ebook format right now and if you connect with me afterwards I'll make sure you get a copy of it but I talk about the concept of being a spiritual farmer I, I really connect with metaphors and uh, Jesus said in Matthew 9 the harvest is ripe but the laborers are few that's an agricultural language because back then everybody had to plant their food and cultivate the land and they knew what season to grow and they knew what season that, you know, food was ready. But see, many of us didn't grow with mamas like mine and my aunties that all cooked from scratch. They labored in the kitchen. There was flour all over the place. There was pots and pans clicking and clacking and, and don't touch the cake in the oven. And you know, they, you had to wait. What are we gonna eat? Just hold on. Now we hungry, let me go to Chick-fil-A. <laughs> we, we don't have no patience. We don't understand the labor and the preparation for the blessing that Sister Janetta sang about. Oh, you ready for the blessing, huh? But are you ready to do the preparation? Come on, come on. Come on now. We live in an instant, give it to me now. Where is my text? Where is my email? Generation. It has tricked us to think that we can put a seed in the ground and we can watch it and say, now nah, ain't nothing happening. Because <laughs> we don't know how to nurture the seed. We haven't decided what we want to plant. We got all kinds of things we plant. Some of you got so many ideas and you wonder why nothing is harvesting because you got too many seeds. For 40 years, I've been standing like this in front of microphones. For 40 years, 40 years ago, I planted a seed. And people came along, we'll do this, we'll try this. No, no, boo-boo. Uh, I planted a seed. I'm going to be an international speaker. This little chocolate girl from Compton is going to be. And I kept talking about it. And there was a time I had to even cross Wilshire Boulevard, but I was thinking in my mind, I was watering my seed. I kept the main thing, the main thing. And I'm living in harvest time now. I'm living in harvest time now. Because I kept the seed, I kept watering it, I kept nurturing it. I wanted to give birth to a certain lifestyle. I wanted to give birth to a certain freedom from a J-O-B to a J-O-Y. I wanted to be able to travel and be blessed to travel all around the world. That's not bragging, that's just saying, you next if you just plant the seed and speak life to it. You are birthing things all the time. But a lot of times we don't stick with it and we, wonder, and we get frustrated. And Jesus said, oh, the heartless is right. You can have anything you want, but are you willing to labor for it? And labor doesn't have to be something bad or heavy. It doesn't mean struggle. It means put some effort. That's right. It means be consistent. Right. It, it means have integrity. It means have discernment. It means be a picker and a chooser. What do you want? Right. The universe will give it to you. God loves you so much, he will give it to you. Yes. But you jumping around over here, then you over here, then you over there, then you back over there. And it's like, he can't even keep up with you. <laughs> I'm blessed to have birthed two sons and it was the toughest time of my life. I didn't know how difficult and challenging and painful it is to be a mother. Before my mother made her transition, I was blessed to be able to say, Mama, I'm so sorry. I did not know. <laughs> I totally misunderstood you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I had no idea, but, I, but my seeds 
are my fruit. And all of us can bear fruit. And so I use the metaphor and the language of the Bible, which was written in agricultural times. They use words like harvest and seed and the vine. They use words like the season. And many of us, we want it to be summer all the time. We want to be happy all the time. Or some people are so addicted to their sadness and their pain that they're sad all the time. They're hurt all the time. And then they wonder why it is because they don't understand we live in a mental and spiritual world. Yeah. I didn't say physical. We live in a mental, say it with me, a mental and spiritual world. And the word says that eyes have not seen and ears have not heard, neither has it entered into your mind what God has, what, planted in you. Don't ask me to do your hair. Don't ask me to cook. Don't ask me to sing. Don't ask me to play the drums. The seed was planted in me to what I was born to do, and I walk in it with so much happiness, but I've labored. I cultivated a seed. There were times I got no check, paycheck, little check, late check, no check. And I kept on going because there was a seed planted in me, not in you. Don't look at me and say, well, uh, you don't even know the pain. You don't even know the cost in my alabaster box. You don't even know. And I don't know yours either. So we have to overcome comparing in this world of social media. How did they get that car? How did they get that house? How did they get that job? How did they get a million hits? How? Stop it. There was a seed of greatness born and planted in you. Stop sleeping on it. Stop apologizing for it. Stop procrastinating. Stop letting it dry up. Stop complaining that you got to water it. So I asked you, what kind of faith do you have? Because there's all different kinds of faith. You can have little faith. You can have a reaching faith, like I'm reaching, like that woman with the issue of blood. She was reaching. Yes. I've got to touch the hem of the garment. And the hem means touching that part that won't let the garment fall apart. Come on. That's right. And sometimes we just, I just, I'm reaching. I don't, I don't want to fall apart. I don't want to, I don't want to fall. I need to, I need to touch. And then we have a resting faith. I'm just going to go to sleep. I'm going to stop overthinking. I'm going to stop worrying. I'm just going to rest. Then there's a trusting faith. This, then I call what I call a farmer's faith. <clears throat> now, I wrestled with the term labor of love because I said, there's got to be, what am I not getting? I'm very much into the meaning of words. And I thought, labor of love? Does that mean it's hard? Does that mean it's struggle? No. When you and I bear fruit, we get evidence. Mm -hmm. So if the farmer plants corn and the corn comes up, what happens? He's got evidence of what the labor of selecting the seed, planting the seed, nurturing the seed, knowing that the bugs and the weeds are going to come and eat it up. So it's the evidence. Some of you got college degrees and you labored. You were committed. Who, who's got a college degree? Just right here. You labored, right? You paid for it. You sacrificed. Come on, somebody. And when you walked across that stage and got that diploma, that was the evidence. That was the fruit of your labor. Am I making sense, anybody? Come on. When you go to your job and you say, it's a labor of love. I don't love my job, but I love the paycheck. <laughs> the paycheck is what? It is the fruit of your labor. Am I making any sense? Yes. So when I saw Aunt Janet baking her famous uh, chocolate cake and I saw her with flour and sugar and vanilla and all these different ingredients, and then she had to put it in the oven and we like, when is it going to be ready? When are you going to make the icing? We just like, our mouths were watering. And she said, just wait, just wait. 
And when she pulled that beautiful cake out, that was the fruit of her labor. I don't know if anybody's hearing me today. You know, I, I had a wonderful event yesterday and I was so exhausted because I'm an event planner. That's one of the things I love to do. And I went home so satisfied and I posted photos and that was my fruit. My husband said, you look tired going upstairs. I said, don't worry about it, brother. I'm going to bed. <laughs> I was burnt out because the labor before the seed raising our children they get on my nerves they listening to me they're rebellious they want something all the time they spilling stuff they breaking stuff but you still love them and then when they become adults and they and they become the adult that you prayed for and they produce and and they move out that part that is your fruit that is your fruit See, because you, you, you didn't cast them aside. That's your fruit. You know, when I wanted to work on making sure my credit was straight and start saving, and I started looking at it, and I said, all right now, go ahead, girl. That was my fruit. See, fruit is evidence. Somebody say evidence. evidence. See, when you speak your word, and you start birthing the travel, the retirement, the weight loss, the blood pressure going down. Come on, somebody. That wonderful relationship, that new friend, uh, that car, whatever it is that you want, that is evidence of your labor, your meditation, the words that you speak. See, I love the urban language. I didn't understand it. They said, oh, I got receipts. <laughs> Oh, yeah, don't, uh -huh. don't mess with me. I got receipts. You said what? Oh, no, baby. I got receipts. Uh-huh. Yeah, 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 yeah. I got receipts. You didn't think I did it? Uh-uh, no. I got receipts. It's, this is my evidence. When I do my taxes, they need to see what? Receipts. Because I told them how much... to save my receipts. This is my fruit. That's all fruit is. It's evidence of how you spent your energy, how you spent your time. You don't like the people in your life? Then they're your receipts. You made some poor choices. You made some poor choices. They're your receipts. I'd rather have four quarters and a hundred pennies. I've got quality people in my life. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I got I got quality people in my life. I, I ain't got time. I ain't got time. I invest in people, I pray for people, I serve people, I call people, I text people, I send gifts in the mail, I write cards. I do, I invest in my field, my garden, and the fruit has come up. I got so much love in my life. I got so much kindness. And, and I learned that over time. That whatever you focus on, that's your seed and the world's going to reflect it right back to you. You see, when, when, when we get spanked by mama or daddy, and they say, keep on crying, I'll give you something to cry about. <laughs> you know why they're saying that? Because if you keep on crying, they're going to give you what you're doing. You're crying, so let me give you some more crying. <laughs> so if you're crying all the time, complaining all the time, unhappy all the time, nothing's working, guess what? You're going to get some more of that, baby. <laughs> You're going to get some more of that. You don't see the good. You don't see the blessings. You don't see all the blessings around. All you see is the bad. All you see is the, I don't even want to say bad, but you see the contrast. And you focusing on the contrast? Well, guess what? We're going to show you some more. Because that's where your energy is going. Oh, God bless my husband. He watches the news. Thank God it's in another room. 
my attention. Guess what happened? I don't want to know. I don't want to know. I'm not going to give attention to that. It's not that I'm trying to be callous or indifferent or reckless. It's just that I understand that if I keep focusing on everything that is a contrast of what I want to produce and birth in my life, I'm going to see more of it and more of it and more of it. it am I making any sense to anybody? So the feminine energy receives, it nurtures it, and then it produces the fruit. Here's the fruit. So that seed we get that I got from my husband, I was like, I didn't see it. It was so tiny. What? what? After a while, stomach gets a little bigger, and a little bigger, and a little bigger, and then here comes the pain. But I'll tell you right now, I don't remember any of the pain. I just remember the joy. I remember the joy. It was worth it. Sometimes I do question it, but it was worth it. <laughs> you know, it, it, it's, it's life. Life offers us contrast, and it makes you appreciate even more when you yes. sing things that don't align with your purpose and don't align with your sense of purpose and joy and the goodness of life. We need the sun and we need the rain. So I don't complain, oh, it's raining. My God, first you're complaining because it's a drought in California. Like, can we just say thank you for the rain? You know? So there are so many words in the Bible that I find as metaphorically relating to agriculture <coughs> and farming. Uh, you just read it, you'll see the words soil and seeds and harvest and vine and the fruits of the spirit and sowing and rain and seasons and crops and a mustard seed of faith. The vineyard, the olives, the fields, the sowing, the reaper, reaping, the vine dresser, the tree, what, planted by the water. Those are all metaphors that have to do with birthing and producing and manifesting and creating. Yes. Are you a tree planted by the water? Yes. Are you really? Yes. In and out of season. Yes. How many of you experience the up and the down all in one day? Yes. It's called lifing. Yes. <laughs> You see, when a farmer puts a seed in the ground, the land, which is your mind, it don't even care. The land doesn't say, I don't want to, know, I don't want to grow carrots. The land says, whatever you want to put in here, what you, what you want to plant. You want to plant lack and suffering? Do you want to plant prosperity and abundance? Do you want to plant love? Do you want to plant a business? Do you want to plant a book? Do you want to plant atonement? What do you want to plant? It doesn't matter. You have to decide what you want to give birth to. The land, it doesn't care. But guess what else the land will do? It's going to have some weeds. And a lot of times we don't, ah, they don't like me. You guys are talking about a hat or two, but then they're hater toots. People that will hate and not understand you, and you may get so discouraged and you'll stop watering your seed because people don't understand you. See, there's some people committed to misunderstanding you. <laughs> I don't care what you tell them. I don't care what kind of receipts you give them. They're, they're just, they're just, <laughs> they're committed. And I learned how to work around that spiritually by, I'm not going to deal with that. You're not going to get my energy today. And if you're going to bring up my past, I don't even live there anymore. <laughs> I burned the house down. <laughs> so I don't know why you're bringing it up because I don't even live there. So what we have is we have what we call pain bringers and parasites and perpetrators and pretenders and part-time participators and pirates and pimps and promise breakers and pity party planners. Those are the people you have to watch out for. They don't carry the light that you carry right now. In fact, you might have been one of those people at one time. So you have to say, I'm ready to birth a new life. I'm ready, I'm ready to plant some new seeds. I'm ready to deal with the weeds. 
I'm ready to break the spirit of fear and low self-esteem. I'm going to break up that hard ground of anger yes. and bitterness and worry. Yes. It'll choke out your seed. You see, I want you to know, this is, this, oh, this hit me so. If you believe you're the evidence of an eternal yes. presence, whatever you want, God, do you, do you know you're the evidence? Yes. Do you know that every time you had a breakthrough, God said, here's some evidence I love you. Yes. Yes. Every time you got a new start, here's some evidence. Every time you got new grace, you're like, oh, how did that happen? That was evidence yes. that God has not taken his eye off. You are the living evidence yes. of the creator. When I look at my son and then I look at my grandson, I was so excited when they came up because I love being around little children. They, they are the evidence yes. that I existed. Yes. Their DNA flows. Yes. My DNA flows through them. Your DNA of the creator is flowing through you yeah. right now. Yeah. Your spiritual parent, your spiritual parent that birthed you yeah. is giving you latitude and attitude. You know, we tell our son, okay, it's up to you. And sometimes you and I, we don't make the right choice, just like our earthly children. Be like, okay, whatever you decide. And be like, oh, Lord, what are they going to decide? <laughs> and it's the same thing with you and I. We've made choices that we say, oh, my God, I should have listened. I should have paid attention. That's why I'm so grateful that I was able to say to my mother before she transitioned, thank you, Mommy. I get it now. I didn't get it when I was much younger. But wisdom is a wonderful thing because I've turned my, my wounds into wisdom. Yes, yes. And I can stand up here all day and tell you about all my wounds and all my mistakes. But I want to leave you with understanding how to embrace your unique qualities, to celebrate your strengths, to be mindful of what you tell yourself. Because as a therapist and counselor, women come to me with so many stories and I say to them, is that the story that you want to tell me again next year? And the year after that, is that your story? We've all been hurt, we've all been rejected, we've all had disappointments, we've all, our life went off script. That wasn't supposed to happen. But we make a conscious decision to say, wait a minute, the creator has given me choice, freedom, liberty, and I'm going to do better this time. I'm going to continue to grow, and I'm not going to tell the same story. Some of you know what I'm talking about. You see somebody that you haven't seen in the years, and they come to you, and you're like, oh, my God, they haven't moved. They're in the same place. <laughs> I don't even go to my class reunion. <laughs> I've been out of school over 50 years, there's no point. <laughs> because the same people come and I hear the same story and I wanna be around people that are growing yeah. and evolving. And I often say, uh, if it don't involve me, don't involve me. <laughs> you learn to say goodbye to self-criticism when you start loving yourself and you're telling a different story. You say kinder things to yourself. You expecting your man to do it, your children to do it, your boss to do it, the pastor to do it. No, befriend yourself, love yourself. You have discovered the true power of stories when you tell yourself the truth about who you are, that you are a child of the Most High. You are the evidence. You are the legacy of your family. 
and even there was painful stories in, in that, you can be a, a, a story breaker. You could, you could be the one that turns things around and say, that's not gonna happen in my life. Just because they struggle, I don't have to struggle. Just because they lack financially, I don't have to. Just because there was abuse, I don't have to experience that. Just because, no. Each generation we get better, we get smarter. Our words are powerful. I believe that I am a spiritual farmer and I celebrate the feminine energy in all of us. I honor all the things that you've birthed, the things that you've done, the things you've overcome, the changes that you've made, the progress that you've made, the things that you've accomplished and you, you play it down like, oh, that, mm. no, acknowledge Embrace it, yes. celebrate it, because yes. it didn't break you. Yes. It didn't break you. Yes. You're still here. Yes. You're still here. So as a spiritual farmer, I want to encourage you to look at your past with thanksgiving, mm -hmm. to look, look at your present with confidence, and to look at your future with hope. May God provide you and guide you and bless you in every way. Yes. And may the one who loves you continue to kiss your heart. Mm -hmm. May the ones who don't really see you or appreciate you, may they gain better sight. Yes. May you confidently step into your challenges, mm -hmm. self-assured of the perfect divine outcome, knowing all the forces of this universe can bring you through any stressful situation to complete healing. And may new doors open and the windows of heaven pour out a blessing that you can't even begin to hold. May your ideas bear fruit. May all of your broken places be mended. May your loved ones be protected. May your dreams come true because of your faith and your actions. And I pray that you enjoy good health, abundant health. May your unique individual light shine brightly. Yes. And may the pressures of life lighten up. Yes. May your gifts and blessings be released. May you enjoy success and peace, always living with an attitude of gratitude. Yes. And I pray that God leans in your direction. Yes because of the seeds of faith that you have planted in the ground. Mm. This is your season yes. to reap what you have sown. Because yes. I always used to hear, you're going to reap what you sow. And wait a minute, there's a flip side of that. I am going to reap what I sow. <laughs> I certainly am. Yes. Isn't that a wonderful law? Yes. Yes. If I speak it, if I expect it, if I celebrate it, if I honor it, if I celebrate it, I'm going to get the very thing that I sowed. It's a wonderful principle. So there is a seed of greatness in you, and the seeds are imagination, instinct, ideas, and an anointing waiting to be cultivated. God's fingerprints are all over you, anointing you with power and purpose and grace. What kind of faith do you have? Is it a stretching faith? Is it a reaching faith? Is it a little faith? Or is it a farmer's faith? May God bless you as you farm and receive the fruits of your spirit. Because whatever you decide to water, that is what will grow. Yes. So I close with a Galatians 6, 9 that says, let us not grow weary in doing good for in due season, you will reap if you do not give up. God bless you. Thank you. Was this not the best first Sunday of May? to start it off with this angel. Let's give her some more love. And I should have known this was not enough to take notes with. 